everyone and welcome to another session of academic research logs. Today we're looking at sampling in quantitative research. So for a quantitative researcher, a quantitative researcher wants to know what causes something else. They would like to measure things and they have a philosophical belief that reality is fixed so therefore they can able to in fact measure it and be able to understand it often they might wonder about how they could generalize their findings and the ability to be able to repeat and replicate a particular research project or a topic So the first type of sampling method that we're going to look at today is called simple random sampling. So this is a type of sampling where the researcher will randomly select participants from a population. So what it means is that everyone has an equal chance of being selected. So these type of sampling methods often will help to ensure that the sample that we're using is representative of the general population. So for example, if the topic we're looking at and we want to select sample for is say people will use YouTube to obtain research information in a particular city. The first thing that we want to do is we will need to define her population. So who are this population? Of course, the people are, okay, so we want the people who use YouTube in that particular area. And you will now go then go ahead and create a list of all the people in the city who use YouTube. And that will be the pool of your participants. So you want to be able to have that information. You want to know the people who use YouTube, all of the people who use YouTube in that particular city. Then you will now then go ahead and create a list of all the people in the city who use YouTube as a research resource. Then after that, you can now assign random numbers to each of those people. You can use a random number generator. There are software these days that can help to generate numbers that you can assign to each of those participants. So once you're, you've assigned your number, then you can now go ahead and randomly select the participants until you get the sample size that you need for your own study so for example again remember i said that simple random sampling is about having participants that are representative of the general population so a good way to think about it is if you have a thousand people who use youtube as a resource in a particular city roughly you would need to enlist about a hundred people for your project so you can have a good representation of your own population of the general population the next type of sampling that we're looking at is called systematic sampling and just as the name itself it is a systematic way of making sure that the sample chosen again represents the entire population so if you had a thousand people who use YouTube as a resource to find research information, what you want to do again first is you would assign each person a number. So you've got a thousand people. You want to assign them a number from one to one thousand. So if you need about a hundred people for your research, yeah, then you, you need to choose every cent person to be included in your study so anyone that that's sitting in number 10 that's the tenth person so every tenth person so anyone that's sitting in number two in 20th 30th 40th up until you get to 100 so all of those people will be the ones that will be included in your study so again that's a systematic way of choosing your sample 
Another type of sampling is the stratified sampling methods. So this is a little bit different because often researchers would use this type of sampling if they've got different demographics within a population that they want to capture. So what I mean by that is, for example, if a researcher was examining, say, different age groups, different gender, different race, um, say we use YouTube as a, as a resource for research information, then an age group would be classified as a stratum, so stratified sampling. So the age group, a component, a demographical component of that population is the age group. So that's a stratum. Gender would be a stratum race would be another stratum so what the researcher does is they can place each stratum into groups and then begin to select their sample so at the end of the day what happens is they have a representation of all the different demographical groups in their study and at the end, as well it helps to maintain variety in their sample in their sampling methods as well the last type of sampling that I'm going to touch on today is called clustered sampling. And this, this method of sampling is really good when you have um, a large population that you're trying to explore. So, for example, say, suppose we were looking at population of people in Australian universities who use YouTube as a resource for research. Um, we can have, say, five different universities that are randomly chosen. And that would be called five different clusters of universities. So each university would be a clutter. Okay. So what we can now go ahead and do is we can choose to randomly select universities and use all the students in the selected universities. Or universities are randomly selected with a sample of students, um, with a sample of students included into the study. So this, I, this, is, this today is just a really quick um, tutorial on the different types of sampling and I hope um, it helps to broaden your understanding if you're doing quantitative research and you will begin to look at your sampling methods. Thank you again for joining me this week. Mm -hmm.